Welcome back to World of Tanks with the Captain. Today we're going to be looking at the T-14 heavy tank. It's American, tier 5. And you can see in the tech tree that it sits with all the other American tanks in my RAM and the T-1 heavy and the M4 that I have. I think it was on sale when I bought it. I can't remember how much it was. Oh, it says it's about 1,500 credits or uh, gold. So this tank actually has a little bit more hit points than your, your typical heavy tank in tier 5. It's got about 690. Uh, the, the KV-1 only has like 640. I think the T-1 heavy has like 660. So it's got a little bit more when it comes to the, the punishment it can take. And that's probably a good thing because it's, its armor isn't isn't that great. It has a fairly decent engine. Uh, it can get up and go. It accelerates quite quick. It doesn't have the highest top speed or anything, but it accelerates not too bad. And that kind of makes up for the, the kind of not so great traverse. It's actually quite bad. That's why I have uh, that clutch braking on my driver so he can help turn the tank around a little bit better. So getting onto the armor, the armor's got about 50 in the front, 50 in the sides, 50 in the back, and it's got a decent slope to the sides. Stuff does happen to go in through here pretty easily though. Um, I find I have to keep this tank to an angle about like this, and it can actually bounce quite a lot of shells. It's got a really steep slope on the front, so that's not bad. But the best thing about this tank I find is the turret. Um, it's got decent gun depression and elevation levels, so you can creep over the top of things and just expose this, and it'll be on a on an angle where stuff, almost everything will bounce off the front and anything else will hit the turret. And I've had a few steel walls in this tank where it, uh, it just sits there and it, it just ping, 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 ping. So the, the turret armor is probably the, the highlight of the armor on this tank, uh, the, the rear. Is a little bit slow, but not too much. The going on to the, the next thing is the gun, and that that's probably the worst thing on this tank. And and the the thing that really really drags it down is the the 92 penetration. the The rate of fire isn't bad, uh, and the aim time isn't atrocious. Like it's 2.1, which is pretty good, but I still find it's a little bit slow. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because the accuracy is so bad. Uh, at point four six, uh, the damage is okay, but when you're you're gonna go up against uh, tier five heavy tanks the, like the KV one or like a Churchill or Churchill three, and even Matilda sometimes, uh, you're gonna have trouble penetrating with a normal ammo. So that's why I run about twelve APC rounds just in case I need to to plow through a tank where I really am gonna have a lot of trouble penetrating it. And the rest I just dump into the AP rounds and the HE rounds. The turret traverse speed is okay, but it doesn't really lend itself well to doing any carouseling around any tanks that are even slower than it is. Uh, tank destroyers, it has enough mobility to get around them, and I found that has worked in the past for me. The, the view range is okay, it's better than like a, a KV-1. It's not great. Like you're gonna get seen bef by medium tanks in tier five and tier six before you see them. And the signal range is okay. And like 570 is all right. It's not 700 like some of the German tanks, but it's uh, it's it's serviceable. So moving on to my crew, I'm on my way to Six Sense. Um, this is the crew I had in my T1 heavy and I've since made them into my M6 crew, but I haven't been able to really get my M6 going because it, I want to have free experience up the tracks and get a, a couple of the better guns before I, I go in there with that tank. So um, I'm going towards Sixth Sense with this guy, and I'm almost there. And Snapshot, because uh, I find I like to move a little bit and I like the accuracy when I'm, when I'm shooting. Clutch braking, so... The, the tank will turn a lot better and situational awareness so it, it'll increase my view range because this tank can can benefit from that and repairs because it, it's not too bad of a 
with getting track this tank. Like I find my tr my tracks get blown off on my KV-1 a lot more than they do on this thing. So uh, repairs is good. I always usually run it with I have a, a toolbox that I I put on it. And my only other module that I really put on here is pretty much my binoculars if I want to sit and and kind of take pot shots at people. But I mean, otherwise you could probably take a, a heavy spall liner or vents. Vents is a little expensive for this tank at 600,000 credits, so uh, I wouldn't really recommend that one. I guess probably the the gun laying drive might not be too bad. You could just sit there and blast away up close without really having to aim too bad. But uh, I don't really know if modules really make this tank a heck of a lot better than it already is. Going on to the other things, I just run special like the the small repair kit and a uh, small first aid kit and an automatic fire extinguisher just because I got some for uh, an event the other day. I think you had to like win three games in a row and every time you did you you got a fire extinguisher so I got about like five or six of those and that was pretty beneficial for me. So yeah this tank I basically just use it to to train up my crew um, for my T1 Heavy and now for my M6 and I think I'm gonna have them at a hundred percent before I even get my M6 up and running. So that'll be really good and now I'll probably load into some replays and you can see what this guy's like in battle alright so this is a game on Enskin standard battle and I've moved forward a fair bit more than my team so I just kinda pull back tell my team to move up and I'm just kinda watching this corner here to see who comes around and I probably should have paid a little bit more attention to what was going on to the left side of me because this BDR rolls up and he, he bounces the shot off me. And... Yeah, he tracked me. I'm guessing that BDR probably has a... probably has the big gun, but I'm not entirely sure because he did bounce on me. So I'm going to put some rounds into him, come over at an angle, and he's going to back off at this point. And I can see our cruiser cruising in there. And uh, the Crusader is going to go and engage him. So I'm going to try and back him up. Penetration. Penetration. Yeah, so I put a couple into him. Then I pull back. Bounced another shot there. So at this point I decided to push the pace a little bit. And don't really give the Crusader any room. So I shoot in the move, and he's down to 38 health, and I can finish him off now. So now moving on to the BDR. I put a shot into him because he's not really paying attention. And he decides he's going to come over and try and take a piece of me, so I angle a little bit and shoot him as he comes around. And he misses, so I shoot him again. But ricochets, someone else puts a round into him. Enemy and he's done. At this point I can see it looks as engaging our, our M8A1. And I'm a little bit too slow to get over there in time to, to help. But I'm able to put a round through the window and take him out through there. And it, now I can see that they've got some more tanks that have beaten us down on the other side of the map. So I start going back and <laughs> pay attention where I'm going and run into the building. So I speed all the way back. And I run into a Covenanter. Enemy vehicle destroyed. Got a shot on the move there which turned out pretty well. And I'm not angled very well here. But I should be able to penetrate this guy fairly easily. One more shot and he should be done. Yeah. So that was pretty much for this game. Someone else kills the Hetzer. But uh, the tank's not too bad mobility wise. Like it can get up and go pretty good and it 
it uh, was able to t take on tier 5 tanks uh, pretty well. This is a game I had um, with my T T14. It's in one of the desert maps here. And I'm the, one of the heavy tanks in our team, so I'm going to move up here. You can see that our, our M6 is camping on the hill. So I'm going to take a peek over and see what I can shoot at. It doesn't appear to be too much to shoot at other than the T-80, so... I can't get a shot at the Hellcat. Enemy armor is damaged. So I put a couple Enemy shots into him. At that point I'm getting shot by something. The artillery's taking a shine at me again. So I got pegged a couple times there for being a little bit aggressive and uh, sitting in the middle. So I decided to uh, wait and let them come to me. Now at this point the other flank hasn't decided to move up at all, so uh, we're getting capped. And it's pretty much just me, a T-40, an Electo, and an ELC Penetration. against this little T80 before all the heavies decide to roll around the corner. Which is all their heavies. Ricochet. And their artillery. So I'm angling, trying to angle here. And I've loaded in my prem rounds because I figure I'm just going to get wasted. Luckily, their KV1F isn't running with the, the big gun. Or I would probably be dead. Yeah, that ELC really helped me. Come around him and finish off another KV-1. And my game comes to a premature end when the Hellcat finishes me off. Damn you, Hellcat. This is a map, uh, Pro -Pro Prokhorovka, Encounter Battle, and our EZ-8 is going nuts on the T2 medium that got brought into this game, so he thinks we're going to lose. So I spot a T-50. His tracks take the shot, though. And at this point, it seems like a little bit more action going on on the other flank, so... I turn my gun over there at the EZ-8 that's making a hero run. <laughs> Put around at him and then they finish him off. Not much going on over there, so I decide to move back to the other flank. And I'm just going to speed this up, because it takes a little bit of time for the T-14 to get over anywhere. This is where the, the T-14 has a little bit of problem shooting at range, like that's about 200 and something meters away. So I know I'm going to be going up against KV-1, so I load in some Prem rounds because I'm going to need to hold this flank by myself because the only other tank here is the, the T-2 medium, everyone else has died. So I'm just using the ridge here and my my decent turret armor, my gun depression, to try and find out where the KV-1 is. And he's gone up to poke me. So I put a round into him. So I'm just going to creep over using my turret, because my turret's the best thing in this tank. And I should have noticed that there was a Yag Panther over there a little bit earlier, but I wanted to put a round into the KV-1. So only my turret's showing at this point, so I decided I'm going to put another round into him, but that didn't work. Got a lucky shot into him there on the way in. So I gotta use the ridge here to my to my benefit, so I can just use my turret as much as I can. 
Nitro. I'm gonna concentrate in the KV-1. This guy probably thinks he's got me at this point. But I turn, put around into him, look like I'm gonna go backwards, but then I fake it. Go forwards, he overcommits, and I'm around behind him now. So I put him to the side, and I got a lucky tracking shot. And he's pretty much cooked now. Night night. Gotcha. Now was it. That was a pretty decent fight. That was a tier 5 heavy KV-1 tank and a Panzer IV. That... Is this an El Haluf encounter battle I had? Where it was pretty much just me me versus the other team because my team, the next best guy, only got did about 500 damage. Pretty much everyone else just went YOLO retard and died. And they started capping immediately too. So I'll just speed this up till I can get to the top of the hill. This T-28 turned out to be a real pain. Because he died right in the middle and then the KV-1 pushes him into the middle of the road. And I took a side shot from that M5 Stewart down there. So I don't want to get hit by him again. Now it's just me and the KV-1. I want to try and get close to the rocks. Yeah, so the tracks ate that shot. I wasn't able to do much about it. He thought he was going to get some sneaky shots in, and he did, but... He died for it. <laughs> Stuck's using me as a meat shield here. <laughs> and he gets tracked. And he tracked me again. But he hasn't really done much damage to me. Doesn't seem to work to be baiting this guy. He doesn't want to come around the corner. So I realize I'm gonna have to probably push up to try and get this guy. The T28 is really in the way. It's hard to get around it to get any shots. I keep jamming into it. That was unlucky. I'm just trying to push the T28 so I can get shots on this guy. Ram5 Stewart decides he's gonna try and get up here too. And then he bites it. So, in hindsight, I probably should have just driven around the, the T28, but. U85 comes in, tries to take some shots. At this point, he can only really see my turret. You can see that two or three shots have banged off the front. So, so I see that this guy's tried to trying to move up here. So I move up just as he's, he's trying to come around the corner. Put one more into the KV-1, another one into the KV-1, and he's finally done. So far I've done 751 damage, but it's been a 
bit of a grind to try and get up this hill with this stupid T28 sitting there. Come around the corner here. You see a Stuart in the cap. Stuck finishes him off. And our AT2 is sitting in down there, and at this point it didn't look too bad for our team. I tried to drop back here to get some shots on that Stug, but he went uh, Klingon on me. And I couldn't see where he went. So I don't really even know where the enemy team decided to go here. That Stug decided to actually come down and try and get me. So I switched back to my normal AP RAM uh, ammo for this guy because I can penetrate him fairly easily. So he's trying to just sit here and, and aim for me. But I still got a decent amount of health left. I could take a shot from him. So he's not paying attention, so I move forward and put a shot into his face. And I bounce another shot. Oh, no, I took a shot. It's probably a little bit too aggressive there. But, secure the kill, that's four kills. And my team has just decided to completely die now. And it's really just me and an M7 left. And the little M8A1 is going to take apart our M7 in a second. They're knocked out. So this is the kind of way the game ended for me. I was able to... Uh, to deal with the T-34 and the T-39 to a certain degree. So they were trying to cap it out. So I came over the top. Enemy is hit. And was able to put Enemy armor is damaged. a couple rounds into that guy. So I decided to change positions here. Come around the other side. And by that point, the T-49 decides to come up, and he's on about half health. I missed a shot on him. If I would have got that shot, it, it might have really helped. So at this point, I probably should have gone at them from straight on down here, but I drove to the top of the hill, and and that was the end of me. I got, uh, I think the T-49 maybe loaded a prem round, and he put it through the, the front of my tank, or the, through the turret, and that was it. But uh, in general, the, the, the T-14 is a really, really decent tank. Um, if you load in the prem rounds, it it can go up against tier 6 tanks and, and not do too terribly. It's got pretty decent armor. If you angle it well, it's not bad. The turret armor is great. The gun depression is great. It accelerates fairly well. It doesn't have very good side armor. And it's got a weedy gun when you run out of the, the APCR. And the accuracy on it sucks. You want to try and get up pretty damn close. But overall, uh, it's one of the, the stronger... Uh, premium tanks that you can get at tier 5 and it's not too expensive so 
I, I, I don't like it as much as my T1 Heavy or maybe my KV-1 because you can kind of boss people around in the KV-1. But uh, I think in general the, the T14 is a, a pretty decent tank for not too much money. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a like and I'll see you soon.